So I also wanted to ask you about kind of your history with social media and talk a bit about my experience, kind of the evolution of social media. Because when I started was Facebook, when it started up, when I was about 17 or 18, and it was just colleges and universities. So Facebook was a very different beast about 15 years ago, right? When it was basically for, you know, teens and 20-somethings talking internally with their college friends. Um, and it's funny how social media has changed in that time because I've had to go back and delete a whole bunch of stuff that I did early on. I've had to reevaluate how I was using it, what I was using it for, who I was talking uh, to on it. So I wanted to ask about your history and experience with social media too. How did you get started using social media? Well, well I suppose from, mine wasn't Facebook. My first channel was Twitter. Um, and I, it was probably back in 2007, 2008. And as a marketeer, somebody said to me, you know, hey, have you seen this Twitter thing? You know, do, have you seen it? What, what do you think about it? And I remember thinking it was absolutely nuts. And it was all about, you, you know, what do you, I think they used to ask the question, what did you do today? Or what are you doing today? Was, was kind of the question. And I just used to think who could who cares you know <laughs> who's going to be interested about this mm. but actually when I then started digging a little bit deeper into and watching I didn't really do anything on Twitter I set up an account and I just used to watch and look and listen and I started to realize as a marketeer who was kind of a little bit obsessed with with taking care of the customer and that you know brands and organizations really should be listening more intently to their customers and, and and them always purporting that that's what they wanted to do but actually doing everything other than doing that um i i started to realize that actually here were channels whereby brands and organizations could directly have conversations and directly be listening in to what was going on exactly with their customers this what are you doing today well brands and, and organizations could be asking those questions and and finding out because i started to see the flow of conversation and and think actually this is a really interesting conversational tool right now brands can not only be listening but they can also be having conversations and this was quite in the early days you know that was not many people were really doing stuff and i started looking at what brands and organizations were starting to do in the in the US I had a couple of clients so I, I run a digital agency and I spoke to one of them that was a telecoms client at the time who you know and the CEO was really quite progressive and he said to me well, let's give it a go you know let's start let's start seeing if we can what we can learn first you know what we can tune into and, and what insights are coming up are they meaningful insights and then let's actually start to play and start to have some conversations and that's when i started to really really look at the power of of what these channels could do and uh, and twitter is still um, you know of course i have a profile on most of the channels mm -hmm. but twitter is is probably still my my favorite and and that's weird because so many people say to me i don't get twitter you know, it's the it's the one channel they don't get. But it, for me, it is such an insightful um, and such an insightful tool. And even though it's evolved and it's changed, it's it's still super useful. Yeah. And I was kind of a late starter on Twitter. I probably only started six or seven years ago, but I found recently it's so useful for direct communications, too. Like sometimes you can cut across a lot of levels of an organization or get straight to a journalist or you can make things happen incredibly quickly because people are on it. They're quick. They're responsive. Um, I'm always impressed with Twitter for that. Yeah, it is. And it's it's kind of the go to channel if you want to get stuff done. You know, yeah. if you really need to. OK, let's just sort this out. Twitter. Um, you know, not always the case, but but 90 percent of the case. Yeah. And you get such a good sense of what other people are talking about, what the hot topics are, what people are interested in. Um, so there's always so much background information you can find about what people are talking about today. Yes. And I find it a little bit more, you know, there's 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 truer conversations. It's a bit more authentic. I mean, there's the usual nonsense that you'll yeah. get, but you, you can really tap into some really interesting conversations. I mean, today I've been, and, and, and the people that you can listen with and converse with are people that you just would never be able to do that with mm -hmm. ordinarily you know i've invited some great people onto my podcast i've i've had conversations with authors that even when i was at business school you know in 1996 these these people were were you know i deem these people as heroes and now i have regular conversations with them mm -hmm. around you know intelligent conversations with them around things that we're passionate about 
which just would never ordinarily been been able to to happen and and that's what it that's what not just twitter but that's what social media you know enables and I think the other point in that is so important that not everyone realizes is it's really about shaping your own experience, right? Is making sure you follow people that you want to hear what they're saying, that you want to connect with. Um, because your kind of social media environment is hugely dependent on what people are posting around you. And some people talk about how it's toxic or it's negative, but don't follow those people, right? Like, make sure you're shaping that environment to be the environment you want to be in. Yeah. And I think we do a good job of that throughout the book across mm -hmm. most of the topics that we're talking about is that, you know, making sure that people are empowered and understand the level of control that they do have. I mean, mm -hmm. I know we talk about some of the, 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 the downsides and the challenges around data and privacy and yeah. some of the realities of all of that. But, but when it comes to your profile, your digital footprint, I mean, you said yourself, you had to go back, you had to clean things up, you had to be mindful and careful yeah. about you know, what you were doing. You do have a lot of control about who you connect with who you don't want to connect with, if people aren't, you know, when people talk about trolling and various bits and things, you, you can you can reduce that. You know, mm -hmm. you can you can avoid that that noise. So you are in control of your channels. You know, yeah. you are in control of your networks. And I think sometimes people forget that and and are worried and and concerned about that. You know, that they can't control it. But actually, there's an awful lot you can control. Yeah, and that's why you need to think about it and be making sure you're actively managing it and doing it deliberately, going in with a purpose and a topic you want to talk about or group of people you want to engage with. Because it is easy to get caught up in negative stuff if you're just kind of letting everything happen to you instead of shaping your environment yourself. 100%. 100%.